recruiting advice from a D1 coach during the coronavirus crisis. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 190. Welcome to the world's longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. I'm John Fugler. As an athletic scholarship coach and recruiting author, I want to help you as a family succeed in the recruiting world and get a scholarship for your student athlete. I'm a dad of two scholarship athletes myself and also the CEO of Recruit Me. Our sponsor is the Athletic Scholarship 24-Month Recruiting Planner and Journal. It's brand new. It's your all-in-one resource for a successful recruiting experience. It was a real joy to compile this. It's available on Amazon, and if you got Prime, you can get it in just a couple days. Well, as I left you last week, I said, I'm going to try to work on getting a college coach to share his or her perspective on the situation that we're facing in recruiting as a result of the coronavirus. And I did, and I'm so thankful. I called on an old colleague, teammate from back in my college days, and uh, this coach has got a lot of experience in recruiting and has gone through a lot in his nearly 40-year coaching career, head coaching career, at a D1 school. That's all I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to introduce him in just a few moments. We talked a couple days ago, and uh, he was able to share something and a number of things. Uh, My intention was to go into this and talk only about the coronavirus situation, and yet uh, this coach shared some things that you're going to find invaluable in the whole scope of recruiting. I was so encouraged after we got done, and I'm so thankful that he shared what he did. Um, So we're going to talk about what to do now, but he's going to share some things and his philosophy about recruiting that I think you're going to, you're going to want to go back and and listen to again. Uh, So we're going to get to that interview in, in just a moment. Okay. Uh, A couple things I wanted to let you know about. First thing is this, uh, there's a, uh, a summit going on. It's a video summit. It's a free video summit. I talk about finding the right fit for uh, your student athlete. Well, this video summit, it's a series of 23 interviews uh, that I think you're going to find helpful. It, there's something about athletics, but there's some. There's a lot of topics beyond this. Peg Keo has put this together, and she's a, a college planner. She works with families in the whole broad scope of the college experience and preparing for it. And she's put together uh, these interviews with guests. I happen to be one of the guests. My interview doesn't come up till April 10th, but this started yesterday. One interview releases every day, and you've got the time to be able to digest this and take this in. So don't miss these opportunities. Some of the topics that she goes over in her interviews is writing a great college essay. Got a whole show just on that. The ins and outs of... uh, uh, collegiate athletic recruiting. <laughs> How about that? Uh, and that's going to be uh, uh, the interview. She did one with me and one with a couple others. Student Loans 101, understand the debt you are taking on. Uh, she's talking with experts in these areas. Uh, How to secure outside scholarships and graduate de- debt-free. Um, preparing your child with learning differences for college. Um, so th- there's just a few. There's many more. And if you'd like to, you got to register, you got to sign up for this, and you get access to all these. They're coming out one a day. Uh, and you can go ahead and click the show notes uh, link that I have for you in our show notes to be able to register for that. Or if you say, John, uh, just tell me where it is. It's kind of a long link. So email me, john at recruitme.com, and I'll give you that link. I'll just respond back to you, reply with that link. Uh, however, you can go into my show notes and get that. So that's one thing. Uh, I encourage you to to go ahead and, and watch uh, these great uh, episodes and great learning experiences for the whole recruiting or the whole college experience, I should say. And then I just want to uh, just say thank you to um, a group uh, called Feedspot, which is named, this podcast is one of the top 35 athletes podcasts. Uh, and I, I was kind of honored to to be part of this list. So I want to thank them for doing that. And I'm going to give you a link in the show notes as well. So you can go ahead and uh, uh, check out some of the others. I know you're looking for things beyond just what I offer here and you might find 
some of these podcasts on uh, on sports helpful for you. Uh, it's feedspot.com, feedspot.com. If you uh, do a search for athletes podcasts, you'll probably find mine there and the list of all, all of them, all 35. And I'll put a link in the show notes for that as well. So I want to mention those two timely things that I could share with you as we get this episode started. And I am going to delay the uh, question I got last week. Sorry, Michelle. <laughs> There's just so much this week. And the interview with my guest uh, this week is a little bit longer than normal, but it's it's packed full of of gems. So, Michelle, I, I've got your question here that you submitted a couple weeks ago, and I will answer it, but I want to take time to answer it. I don't want to uh, take away from what we've got here in this interview. Anyway, that's what I have for you as far as news in the news segment. Let's go ahead to this very, very timely and special interview that I did with a D1 coach. We zoomed it, and we're going to zoom right to it. 39 years ago, John Anderson took the helm as head baseball coach of the University of Minnesota and has been there ever since. He's a coach who knows recruiting with 40 cycles of it. Coming into this season, he had compiled 1,317 victories. He ranks 23rd all-time among D1 baseball coaches. Coach Anderson has guided the Gophers to 11 regular season Big Ten titles and a conference best uh, 10 Big Ten tournament titles. He's also won Big Ten Coach of the Year eight times. As far as NCAA postseason tournaments, his teams have made 19 appearances, including the Super Regionals in 2018. And Coach Anderson and I uh, were actually teammates at Minnesota in the mid-70s. So, John, it's a reunion here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's nice to be uh, reconnected here. And uh, uh, it's amazing where our journeys have taken us. And um, some days I wake up and say, how did I get here? <laughs> and, uh, what really wasn't in the cards when it all started uh, back there in the middle 70s. But uh, it's been a wonderful journey. And I'm grateful for uh, the many blessings it's brought to me over the many years. Well, you're in the right place. And I, I see that just uh, the long history and uh, victories and so many experiences with the kids, too. I, I, I'm sure you you just love You must love it if you're still doing it. I do, John. I think the part I enjoy the most is the mentoring and uh, helping prepare people for the next 50 years of their lives, as we call it. And uh, that's our real purpose. And so I think when I do retire, the piece I'll miss the most is the relationship piece and, mm -hmm. and the mentoring piece and, and trying to help people find their way. And, and when they get stuck, try to help them get unstuck and back on the right journey. And uh, I think that's the part that uh, I cherish the most. Uh, I love the coaching piece, obviously. We love to compete and play the games, but I think uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the piece that's uh, really resonated with me is the relationship piece. Mm. You're, you're more of a, a life coach than a baseball coach, right? Well, in some ways, yeah. And we're, we're in institutions of higher learning, and that's the goal here, to earn a degree and help people shape their lives and become young adults and be able to go out in the world and, and do something uh, significant or something uh, that's... Uh, uh, interesting to them or a place where they can make a difference. So uh, that's why we're here. And uh, yeah, we're competitive and we like to win and, and those, those sorts of things. But uh, I think there's a bigger piece here than, than just the baseball part. Mm, that's refreshing to hear. And I uh, hope our families are encouraged as you hear that as well. Um, well, you're uh, on your schedule. You're supposed to be at uh, Texas Tech as we record this interview. So that's, that's not happening. <laughs> um, and I mean, this is just an unprecedented time. This is, I guess you could call it the longest rain out in baseball history. Um, yeah, I've had, I've had games canceled a lot of different ways in my 40 years in the business, but uh, uh, this one was uh, unprecedented. Uh, I never saw it coming. How could you? And, uh, you know, it's a difficult and challenging time for everybody in our world right now. It's the right decision, obviously, and we got to look out for the health and safety of, uh, of people in our spaces and and so, but it's different. I really feel for our players. They invest so much into their experience, uh, uh, not just this year, but throughout their careers and, and uh, all the preparation that goes into to preparing the season and then getting started and starting to find your way. And then all of a sudden it's, it's over. And uh, so you feel for the kids uh, and, uh, you know, and they're also, they're all off campus now and they're taking their classes online and, so they're losing out on that uh, human interaction experience on campus and all the relationship pieces and things that come with being a college stu student and uh, where you learn and grow, as we talked about. So 
don't lose sight of that. They're also missing out on, on, on being in their college spaces and on their campuses and having that, that, that college experience that I think is important to all of us uh, when we were there as well. How are you encouraging your players now? I mean, yeah, they're crushed. Um, what, are you, what are you doing? You, you mentioned mentoring. What's, how do you fill that role at a distance now? Well, we try to always uh, remind them of, of trying to give them a healthy perspective. And, you know, this is a dose of reality. I mean, nobody gets promised that they're going to get to put the uniform on tomorrow and play or practice or continue to try to master their skill and, and, and play the game they love. And so I think the message is here is, uh, you know, you better cherish each day and every opportunity you, you get to play the game and, 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 and um, go to school and, and uh, start to develop yourself as a person that uh, – there's no guarantees for tomorrow, and uh, it's, a, it's a dose of reality here for all of us, and, and I think we need to grab some healthy perspective here and understand that uh, some days, you know, we don't feel like uh, going out there and, and doing our best, or giving our best effort, or trying to improve ourselves as a person, or as a player, as a student, or whatever it might be, and I think uh, it's, a good, it's a message that we I think that we need to continue to, to hit home with our kids, that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege uh, to go to college and, and earn a degree and especially if you get a chance to play division one sports very few do that uh, you better uh, you better appreciate and, and, and cherish that opportunity and try to get the most out of each and every day and we're just going to try to keep, keep mentoring help them being better leaders of themselves and others and hopefully be able to impact others in the process here or who help others or maybe struggling more than they are right now so we'll just try to keep, keep uh, messaging uh some healthy perspective and, and, and what we can learn from this and, and help them learn and grow as they uh, get prepared to, to take on their adult challenges when that time comes. I think it's uh, true for everybody in this now, the athletes uh, thinking about their sport and they were so consumed by it. And it, it is a reality check that life is more than sports. Um, and so we do have to function outside that and, and take a, a longer look at things. Yeah, and I think what's hard for young people today, we tend to define ourselves by how good a baseball player we are, for example. And if we play good today, I'm a good person and I'm going to be loved more by those that are important to me. And if I don't play good, I'm not a good person and they're not going to love me as much. And, you know, I think we try to be careful here to make sure that we're not defining our, our lives and who we are as people by our batting average or our ERA or how good I played today. But uh, there's more to us than just the baseball player. It's something they love to do. It's something they're passionate about, but you shouldn't need it to define who you are as a person. You want it, you enjoy it. It's, it's something that you have some talent for, but uh, at the end of the day, we surely can't use our sport to completely define us as who we are as people. And I think when you head down that road, it becomes a slippery slope and very, very hard to be consistent, in my opinion, in any part of your life if that's how you define yourself as a person. Mm, mm, good to hear that. Uh, it's so good to hear that. I'm sure the uh, families who are listening now, they, they, they're, it, it's got to have, have an impact on your families as you listen to this. That step back and, and take uh, perspective if you're, of your life and your situation here in your sport. Um, Coach, how are you using your time these days? What does your typical day look like now? It totally turned upside down. Well, we're all working remotely. Uh, we're getting uh, experts at Zoom. And, uh, <laughs> That's how we're yeah. doing this interview. <laughs> That's how we're doing this interview. So, you know, about two weeks ago, we were preparing to play a baseball game, and now I'm trying to figure out how to manage uh, my world at home here and stay connected to, to, to my assistants and to our players and, and continue on to prepare for the, the future, whatever that holds, and uh, stay connected to the department. And, you know, there's, there's future scheduling. There's always recruiting going on. You can still, even though we can't recruit off campus or on campus right now, you can still do quite a bit in terms of uh, searching and, and uh, looking at uh, profiles of, of student athletes that come your way via the computer or different different services or whatever it might be. So I don't think the recruiting uh, ever ends. You do a little bit every day. So that's that's always a space that's full. And, and uh, you know, and we're also trying to get our arms around what's going to happen with the players that lost their year of competition here. Are they going to get it back? It's a big de debate that's going on mm. nationally as well as on our own campuses. And how do we handle that? Uh, just the seniors get a year back. Does everybody get a year back? Um, you know, and, and uh, there's a lot of pieces to try, trying to figure out how we, how we go forward with that. So um, it's, uh, it's kept me busy. There's things to do. 
always things to do. But I, I think the one thing that I think is important for all of us is in our business, it seems like you're always preparing for the next day, the next thing, whether it's a game, a practice, recruiting, fundraising, whatever it might be. Um, and uh, I think you get a chance to reflect a little bit right now. And I think it's healthy to spend some time reflecting on on uh, where you're at and there's different processes maybe that you can start to incorporate, uh, take a look at data that we had from this past year and do we want to make changes in how we do things in terms of our systems or processes or how we practice or how we recruit or what it might be. So I think you have a little more time to kind of be reflective and I think it can be a healthy time. Maybe we'll find some better ways in something we do here uh, during this process. I've been telling my recruitment families that they need to take advantage of this time and not to put their recruiting efforts on hold, but uh, contact coaches, get their resumes out there, keep communicating, keep the relationships going. I've even said that every coach has more time for recruiting than they ever have. Am I right by saying that? Yes, we do. You know, we're not, we're not practicing. We're not playing. We're not traveling. Um, you know, uh, this time of the year is because was probably less about recruiting because we've tried to focus on our own team and our own players. I think they deserve our best effort. Uh, during the season. So we probably do less of that uh, at this time. So uh, now we have more time and uh, recruiting is the lifeline of your program and, and it's an important space and uh, you're only as good as the people you recruit and put into your family and find good fits for your culture and, 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 and your purpose and your why. So um, it's, it's, yeah, we do have more time for that right now. And even though we can't go off campus or have kids on, I I think we can continue to try to find the right fits and take a look at uh, what's available and who's out there. And, and, um, and we do get an opportunity to go out and evaluate and make contact. Uh, hopefully we'll have some more, more information that will be helpful. Uh, this all came at such a strange time be, because the, it was the crossover between winter and spring sports. Uh, so it affected so many sports. You think of uh, spring football and coaches were just, uh, totally consumed with that. All of a sudden, that ends. Uh, of course, you're just ramping it up uh, in baseball, other spring sports, ramping it up, winter sports, getting into tournament competition, and just everything came to a halt. So it, it just seems that every coach, um, no matter what sport they're in, uh, they have this this time for recruiting, uh, not, just, not just spring, but uh, uh, these other coaches, they weren't just sitting around doing nothing, but many of them were in the midst of, of competition at the time. Yeah, no question. So I think it caught us, uh, you know, obviously nobody was prepared for it. So it, 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 it caught us uh, unexpectedly. And so I think we just try to look at what, what can we do? What can we do to make our program better? What can we do to make ourselves better? You know, what, where can we invest some time here um, uh, that when we do get back up on our feet and, and back to doing what we normally do on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we can be better at it. And, so, you know, I think there's, there's that saying, you're either, either getting better, you're getting worse, you don't stay the same. So we try to use this opportunity to try to better ourselves and our program and, 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 uh, and, and how we uh, coach and mentor our kids and how we recruit and do all the different processes. So it's a reflective time, no question, but also a time where I think we can move our program forward. What, what are you doing in the recruiting space right now specifically? Well, um, uh, we did have an indoor prospect camp uh, the first Saturday in March. Um, we had a series with Utah at U.S. Bank Stadium indoors, and so we took the morning and early afternoon to do a prospect camp. Uh, I think that's something that's changed dramatically in recruiting today with the recruiting rule changes, and uh, uh, it's, you don't have as, much, uh, as many opportunities to see kids off campus, but you can have these camps on campus as long as there's some instruction to it. And it gives us an opportunity to bring kids in and evaluate, not only evaluate their skills, but get to know them. Um, also be able to uh, show them, uh, uh, you know, the university and uh, get uh, them some understanding of what our philosophies are and what our culture is and what our program's about and, and, um, and, and then uh, uh, evaluate them and, and, and uh, try to help them in the recruiting process as well. And, and um, I've said many times, recruiting's about fits. You know, the kids are looking for the right fit, and we're looking for the right fit. Mm. And how do you find the right fit? Uh, you gotta, you gotta be able to make contact with people. You gotta learn more about each other. I think the recruits need to do their homework and uh, invest some time into uh, doing home homework about the program. And and, and if you, you can come in contact with somebody that's playing there that you know or has played there, or, 
or can do some research um, to find out what uh, that culture is all about and how they run their program and the experiences that the kids had. Uh, I think sometimes people don't do enough homework about uh, some of the choices they make. And then all of a sudden they get to that particular school and didn't realize mm -hmm. that the culture was what it was. And uh, I tell young people all the time, this is the most important decision you're going to make in your young life um, is where you go to college. And if you have an opportunity to play sports, it's going to impact the, the rest of your life. And so uh, you better invest some time and energy into that process. It shouldn't just be a quick decision um, or a decision that's made based on emotion. I think there's got to be some fact finding to it. I think you have to have some criteria of what you're looking for in terms of a college experience, the size of the school, what you want to study, you know, um, uh, how far away from home do you want to go? Um, you know, and, and again, it's about people and, uh, you can look at bricks and mortar and beautiful buildings and stadiums and facilities, but at the end of the day, really the experience is about the people. And uh, you got to get to know the people, whether it's the current student athletes, whether it's the coaches, whether it's the academic advisors that you're going to be interacting with. Spend some time on the campus when it's actually in session. We always have our recruits that come to campus and on official visits, go to class with one of our student athletes so they get a sense for what it feels like to sit in the class and walk on the campus and we don't put them up in hotels. We put them up in dormitories with the kids so they experience what that feels like. And, and um, we're looking for kids that want to come here because we're offering the experience they're looking for, not because we have to prod or pull them to join our program, but to just help them find what they think is the best experience for them so they can get the most out of their college experience. And I think the, the main thing is it takes time. It takes an investment, and you have to do research, and you can't uh, just uh, – uh, uh, sometimes uh, just make a quick decision because somebody calls you on the phone and offers you an opportunity or a partial scholarship and you, you see the team on television playing and I want to play there, but you know <laughs> nothing about the school or program. And so then they get there and they're unhappy and now heading down the transfer road and moving on. That's a difficult thing. And, and so I, I encourage parents and, and, and young people to, to really take some time to sit down and figure out what kind of experience they're looking for. And not just from an athletic standpoint, but from an academic standpoint and the size of the school. Some don't like big schools, some like small. I mean, so um, I see kids run around the country and go to these showcases and, and show their skills. And all of a sudden they get recruited by somebody and they don't want to go there. And uh, well, uh, be careful for what you wish for. And uh, <laughs> um, so I think it's important that you sit down and really try to take a look and try to find five, six, seven, eight schools that really are, are interested to you, not just because of the, of the athletic opportunity, but all the other things that come with it. And I think at the end of the day, you'll make a much better decision. Oh, great advice. Thank you. That, that's just uh, the completeness of that. I love it. Uh, as you are, now we got the coronavirus and all these things that you had <coughs> planned and uh, the way you're doing recruiting, you have to make a total shift. So what, what are you doing now? What, what is the new normal for you, at least for a while, in the way of recruiting? How are you continuing to do this recruiting thing when you can't see players and you're not traveling and, and all that? How do you get the job done? Well, there's, uh, there's different rules. There's, there's some classes you can't have any contact with. Um, and there's other classes that you can email or you can text message, you can talk on the phone. Um, and so there's different rules. I won't get into all the rules, but it impacts different classes. So sure. there are classes that we can communicate with. You know, we're, we, we've got an opportunity now to break down all the data we collected from our prospect camp, trying to sort through that. And, uh, and also when those kids come there, we tell them, you know, we can't recruit all of you. So if we can help you in terms of passing on our evaluation to other schools you're interested in, we'll do that for them. Really? That's great. We're not just, this isn't just a selfish endeavor here. Uh, we're trying to help people find the right, right fit for themselves and the right opportunity. And, and, uh, and then I think we, we, you know, so we're going through some of that and tend to take a look at who we have interest in. And, and um, you know, we had a kid on campus uh, in December from out of state that's in the 21 class and, and uh, he could come on unofficially and he just made a commitment to us the other day. So we, we've done something in recruiting. Yeah, it hasn't stopped. Uh, <laughs> it stops. So, um, so again, I, I think it's just there's different classes and different things you can do. But um, I told you at the end of the day, we're 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 trying to collect data. Maybe you can call up uh, the kids' coaches and 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 you can do some homework about them academically and as people and 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 just learn more about their profiles. 
uh, by talking to people that uh, that, that uh, are their uh, their coaches or their teachers or, or or work with them in their their traveling programs or whatever it might be. So you can you can collect a lot of notes and get a lot of information. And and as I told you before, we're not just looking for the the best player. We're also looking for a, a person that fits into our culture. And uh, it's not just about athletic talent. There's some other pieces, and we've not recruited some kids because we didn't think they were good fits for our, for, for our culture and our program and how we do things here. And, and so um, I think we spent probably a considerable amount of time of just trying to figure out the character of a young man. Will he fit here? And is he interested in others, not just his own experience and his own self and what kind of leadership skills can potentially bring to our program? And, and I, I tell our kids every day, you know, try to, find a way to, to, to take an interest in somebody else's experience, not just your own, because you can help others. Uh, you might be older, you've been through that already, you've experienced adversity, and you can help some of these young people get through it because you've been there, you've been in that space. So, you know, be self-aware, look around, and, and look for opportunities to help others. So we're looking for people that also are high character peoples and, and the guys that uh, believe in what we do and our why and want to be a part of it. Coach Anderson, uh, what would you recommend families do in the next four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks? We don't know how long this is going to last, but uh, we don't want them sitting on their hands now. Uh, what, do you, what do you recommend that athletes do in this whole recruiting space and, and parents as they, in this weird time? Well, first of all, I think spend some time trying to figure out what you're looking for in terms of your college choice and, and uh, do some research. You can do a lot of research on the internet and and um, you, can, you can research schools and, and, and do some research. Try to make a list of schools that potentially have interest in. Uh, that's important. And, and, and have reasons why you're interested in those schools. Um, and, and criteria. You know, I tell kids all the time, write down five, six, seven, eight things you're looking for in your experience. And then as you go around and visit these different programs and talk to different people, see if you, those boxes are being checked for what you're looking for in your experience. And uh, so spend some time making that list. And and then, you know, if you, if everybody has, uh, you know, a, a camera phone today. And if you got video or any kind of video that you can send out, it just gives us a, a brief uh, look at uh, as, as you as a player, or as an athlete uh, doing your thing, um, just to help us, uh, you know, uh, take a look at where you are physically, put together a profile about yourself, about your academic credentials and, and, and your goals and, and what you want to accomplish in, in, in college and, and so just uh, give us a profile of yourself and a resume of yourself and what you're looking for and send it out by email. Uh, we get hundreds of emails every day from people with profiles and videos and different things that come in. And, um, and uh, you know, you, you, you try to get through as many as you can. You look at the ones. But I think what you do is you find out if there's people in there that, that are good fits and matches and that you have interest in learning more about. So. Um, and that's pretty inexpensive to be able to, to put together something like that. And mm-hmm. it has effect. It doesn't have to be professionally done by any means. And it's just basically an introduction to, to, to that particular person and something about them that uh, may, uh, may uh, that particular coach uh, may have interest in, in after looking at it and, and, and learning more. I, uh, I say to my uh, families that are doing videos, I say, uh, don't worry about the music and the sound effects and everything because the coaches turned down the volume anyway. They muted anyway. <laughs> yeah, Am I right on that? Yeah, some of these people put in an awful lot of time and energy and money into developing some of these, these uh, presentations and, uh, of themselves. And, yeah, they're nice. They look good. But, uh, you know, don't feel like you have to go to that means. Um, you know, you're just trying to make a basic introduction of, of who you are and what your skill sets are and, and potentially if you're a fit. And, uh, and uh, so – um, uh, be careful. You don't have to make a, a you know, exaggerated uh, video uh, uh, here and send it out. Uh, it's not that. It's not that important. And for parents who uh, are not sure how to make a video, don't worry. Your kids know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. No question. <laughs> they can edit that. Well, bottom line, Coach, um, what would you say to parents and athletes right now who are they're in fear, they're panicking, uh, they're not sure what to do. They're not sure what not to do. I mean, there's this, there's an emotional uh, angst at this moment and even panic. Uh, what would be your advice here? Well, first of all, we're all, you know, we're, we're all experiencing the same thing. So it's not like you're experiencing something different than somebody else. We're all in the same space here. So I think you got to find ways to, to, to just uh, try to continue to, to do well in school. 
keep working on your academics. Uh, that's, that's a critical part of going to college. So, you know, don't let that part slip because we're going through a difficult time because I can't play my sport right now. Uh, don't let another part of your life fall apart because you lost something you love to do. Uh, we got to continue on academically, find a way to help others, uh, make an impact on other people some way, somehow. Maybe there's elderly in your area that need support and help at this time that you can do something for. Um, the, the, the sports piece will come back when it comes back. And, and um, I think we can find ways to make ourselves into better people right now and better students and, and, and do things that are going to help us the rest of our lives. And let the sport piece come back when it comes back. And uh, I wouldn't get all worked up about it that you feel like you're falling behind or getting behind somebody else because everybody's in the same space. And, and uh, we'll get back out there and you'll, you'll be playing again and we'll be evaluating again. And, 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 the, and the recruiting piece will go on. But uh, I, I would tell people don't panic and uh, don't be upset by it all. Don't feel like you're losing out on something here because I think the space will come back up soon enough and we'll all get back to business as usual before too long. Well, you sure have a good way of relaxing people. I feel better already. <laughs> uh, really. Um, and you just uh, stepping back, not not panicking, um, because like you said, we're all in it together. So coaches are, are not, a, have, they don't have the same expectations out of the families at this point. So Coach John Anderson, thank you for joining us. Uh, coaches, uh, almost 40 years as head coach of the University of Minnesota baseball team and a lot of wisdom, uh, as you've heard. Uh, and please take this to heart. Uh, the things that he's saying here about overall recruiting process are so true. Uh, go back and listen to this interview again. If you're listening as a, as a parent, make sure your son or daughter comes in and listens with you because it's, it's wise counsel as you move forward. Well, we wish you the best, John. Whenever uh, things get back to normal, hopefully this summer, you'll be back out on the recruiting trail and uh, get, things, uh, get things going again. Thank you, John. It's been, uh, it's been fun to connect again. I wish you the best in, in your work, and your work uh, can be helpful to people. And so I, uh, I compliment you on, on what you're doing here and trying to help people in, these, in this recruiting space try to find their way. Great. Thanks. Take care. Take care. You too. Thank you.